Rick here. Much in the way the SmartShop CNC has revolutionized the way you process your panels, Laguna is taking another giant leap forward in automation for the cabinet industry. With that in mind, Laguna engineered the SmartShop LD4, the next wave in automation for the cabinet industry. The LD4 uses spring pins and H-clips, completely eliminating the need for glue and screws. Your cabinets can ship flat pack and be assembled in minutes on site without the use of any tools, which of course saves you time and money. With the Laguna SmartShop LD4, cabinet assembly truly is a snap. So without further ado, we'd like to show you how this is all done. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the Laguna SmartShop LD4, hosted by Max Miller. Thank you. Hi, I'm Max, Head of Design and Applications here at Laguna. And I'm here with the LD4. It's an automated system for inserting Lockdell fasteners. And if you're not already familiar with the Lockdell system, essentially an alternative cabinet assembly method that uses clips and pins in place of your typical fasteners that you'd use, like say dowels or screws. The LD4 is intended to be used alongside a router, such as the SmartShop 3. The idea being that you're cutting your parts out on the CNC router, and then you're inserting them into the LD4 to receive pins. I'm gonna use Mosaic for this project, and along the way, I'm gonna to describe to you how I set up the construction method that I wanted to use for this cabinet and how I integrated the Lockdowl system. So regardless of whatever construction method you need to use for your project, whether it be face frame or frameless, whatever thickness of material or material options you need, you can use Mosaic to develop that cabinet construction method and you can integrate the Lockdowl system and use our LD4 to create your cabinets quickly, efficiently, and with very little effort. So now let's step into Mosaic and I'll show you how I made this cabinet. I'm making this demo cabinet using Mosaic, which is one of several software options out there that have already implemented the Lockdow system. That means they've already done a lot of the legwork as far as setting up tools for the Lockdow and templates that we can use in the job. So I'm creating a new file. I'm going to call it LD4Cab. Next, I'm going to go into the Room Settings tab. We can define universal settings here for each room in a project. You can have as many rooms as you need. In my case, I only need one room. Now I'm going to make a couple changes here that will affect that room. I'm going to change these doors to be slab style doors. And I'm going to change the hinge connection to be a Euro frameless hinge connection because these are going to be frameless cabinets. Lastly, I'm going to go down to my material templates. Right now they're set as plywood. I'm going to go and grab the three quarter inch melamine templates. In the room tab, we can start to define the kitchen. There are some default templates on the left hand side, and I'm going to stick to this single wall template. If this were a real kitchen, I could go on to define windows, sinks, appliances, stuff like that before adding cabinets. But the single wall is fine for what I need to do. So I'm just going to move on to the products tab, and that's where we're going to add our cabinet. It's an easy drag and drop system. So I'll just grab this single door cabinet and drop it against the wall. Now there are an endless number of ways that I could edit this cabinet from its default parameters, but I'm fine with the way the cabinet currently is, except that, of course, we need to define the fasteners. Mosaic templates are stored in libraries. So to define the LD4 template for this cabinet, I'm gonna open up the library for hardware and then I'm going to open up the library for joint fasteners. Mosaic actually comes with a template already created for the Lockdown channel lock, and it includes the correct route path, and it contains a pretty good system for positioning those Lockdown channel locks along each joint. If I go and open up the joint for where the top and bottom of the cabinet are going to meet the ends or sides of the cabinet, 
you can see it's going to define a few different locations. The first location is going to be 20 millimeters from the front. And the next location will be added only if the joint length is greater than 210 millimeters. It'll place one 180 millimeters from the front. And so forth. However, the LD4 has a sensor to measure the lengths of parts and it allows us to program it parametrically for greater ease of use. So I've copied the mosaic template and I've kept the same route path, but I've altered the logic for the joint locations. So you can see all this part is the same, but if I go in here to the joint connection, in my case, the first location is the same, 20 millimeters from the front. But the second location, rather than being measured from the front, is measured from the rear. That means that regardless of how long I make each cabinet, it will always draw the groove beginning at 116 millimeters from the rear. And then for my third location, if the joint is long enough, it'll add a third groove at the center of the joint. That's the channel lock template. We also need to define the spring pin joint, which is quite easy to do. I've already created a new template called Lockdown Spring Pins, and in there I've set the fastener type to drill holes, and I've defined a single hole. It has a drill diameter of 8 millimeters and a depth of 16 millimeters, which is described to us by Lockdown. They provide you with documentation for all of their hardware. And then in this case, I don't have it adding a fastener for the top and bottom because, of course, I'm going to be using the channel lock for those. Instead, I have them being applied to the nailers and the toes. So if I go into the toe here, you can see I have two locations set, 20 millimeters from the top of the joint and 20 millimeters from the bottom of the joint. So that's where it's going to insert those pins. And that's the fastener setup. Now what's really, really cool about this when you get into the LD4 side of things is I can have a single program, a single program that I will use for every single one of these parts. And that program will have a series of parametric if-then statements. Essentially, if the edge that you slide into the LD4 is short enough, it'll put spring pins in. And then if it's longer than that length, it will put channel locks in based on the logic that I've described here. Now, what's really cool is when we take this over to the LD4, because we can use parametric programming to describe all of this using a single program. So when I push a part in, the machine is gonna measure the edge length of the part that I pushed in. And if it's a long edge length, it'll put channel locks in. But if it's a short edge length, it won't put channel locks in and it'll put only spring pins in. So all of my parts done with a single file. I'm going to open this up in Google SketchUp for a better view of the cabinet. And I'll change to X-ray mode so you can see this. The lines along the top and bottom represent those channel lock grooves that we'll be cutting. Then if I move over to this nailer, you can see the spring pin holes that will be drilled out. This is a good way to verify if your parameters are set right. And all of this looks correct. So I'm going to close out of SketchUp and move on to optimizing the parts for the machine. So I'm going to head to the cut list tab and I'll click this optimize button. Choose the three quarter inch melamine parts. In the optimization menu, we can define the specifics of how the parts will be cut, what machine is doing the routing, and we can produce the G code to eventually run on the machine. I'm going to head to the optimize tab within this menu. Now, in order to cut those slots for the channel lock, we need to add the channel slot cutter tool to our tool set. And this is done in the CNC tooling library. So I'll head up here to libraries, CNC tooling. The slot cutter tool is already defined by Mosaic correctly. So it's just a matter of adding it to a tool set along with any other tools we'll be using. So over here in tool sets, you can create a new tool set. I've already done so and called it demo tool set. You can see I have a couple 3 8 inch tools here and a couple quarter inch tools here to do some of the smaller pockets. And then I have that locked owl slot cutter to cut those grooves. 
As long as you have that added, you'll be cutting the slots correctly. Next, we can optimize the parts for sheet efficiency. I'll quickly verify that everything looks correct on the sheet. And finally, I'll generate my G-code to send to the router. The LD4 takes it one step further. Not only does it bore your holes and drill the grooves necessary to insert the pins, but you can load them into these two top compartments and it will insert those pins for you as you go. Programs can be loaded parametrically or scanned in using the barcode scanner. So in my case, I just wrote a simple parametric program. What it does is it measures the board length of each piece that's inserted and then it evenly distributes either channel locks or spring pins based on the length of the board. So if it's a small board, it's gonna insert two spring pins. And if it's a longer board, it'll automatically know not to insert spring pins and instead put those channel locks in, three channel locks, four channel locks, however many are necessary based on the length of that board. Just to highlight some key features of the Loctal system, part of what makes it so great is that all the fasteners are inserted into the sides of the cabinets rather than on the top, so it's very easy to flat pack ship this to its destination. Then once it gets there, you don't need any glue or fasteners to put it together. It's all ready to go. You just slot the pieces in. And really, other than a mallet, you don't even need any other equipment to assemble your cabinets. So you may be wondering why four zones? And it's true, if we were cutting a single cabinet, we could stick to zones A and B. The idea being that we would push this into zone A, it'll cut that edge, and then I'd flip it around and push it into zone B, which will cut a mirror image of whatever zone A would be. You don't have to use it that way, but that's the general idea. And then zones C and D, get into production, right? We don't want any downtime. And so now we can push one part into zone A, come over here while that's running, and push another part into zone C. Once it's done completing that, it'll automatically go to zone C and start. And we have time to flip this part around and push it in. When it's done with zone C, it moves on to zone B. And once it's done with that, we'll have already loaded what was in C now flipped it around and put it in zone D. And while it's doing that, we'll come back over here and we'll insert the next part into zone A. So what you have is a seamless operation with no downtime and only a single operator is required to run this whole process. Thanks for watching this video. I hope that you found it informative. And if you want more information on the LD4, there should be a link somewhere around here that you can click or just wait till the end of the video and there'll be a phone number that you can dial for more information, again, about the LD4 or any of our other products. Thank you.